welcome to the PCC Today Show. I'm Charla Robertson and I'm here today with Dr. George Jenkins, Dr. Samson Davis, and Dr. Rameek Hunt, the authors and the subject of the book, The Pact. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to start off um, with a quote from Joseph Campbell. Follow your bliss and don't be afraid and doors will open where you didn't know they were going to be. So my first question for the three of you would be, how did you find your bliss? Well, for, for the three of us, it was just about us coming together and being best friends. And we grew up in a time in North New Jersey where we wanted to become something in life, but we were surrounded by a, a great deal of negativity. But we believed in our friendship. And so with that, we started off down the road of education being sort of paramount and the foundation. And then the concept of medicine came to life. But um, to that point is that we started just walking in that direction of education and then medicine and dentistry revealed itself and then we had the team already in place to go after that goal. And so uh, throughout the years we just sort of blazed the trail and we were triumphant in the end. And you know, and I think, you know, a part of that bliss is, is us, um, you know, giving back to the community and trying to, um, you know, kind of piggybacking off what Dr. Davis just said using our life story and, and, and what we've been through to try to inspire a lot of people. It's, it's a lot of times it's tough to find inspiration in these, in, in, in today's time. And so we hope that we can serve to be that beacon of hope, if you will, and that light and to let young people know that there, there are a lot of options out there um, for success and, and things that you could do outside of sports and entertainment. Um, although I love sports and entertainment, there are other options that you can have, you know, outside of it. And we want to, you know, let young people know that, that you know, education is, is that option. And, you know, even if you have, you know, obstacles that you have to overcome, which we all do, um, you can still make it. And that's, our story is a testament to that. Um, this is maybe a silly question, but I was just curious, why specifically medicine? Why not law? Why not English? What was it about medicine that drew the three of you? Um, that's interesting. Uh, as I always think sometimes it could have been any one of those um, professions. We were just looking to attach um, our drive to something and, and it, it worked for us to, to attach it together. It, it was comforting, I think, for us, just the thought of um, tackling our futures together. Um, but we were just, just so happened to come upon a, a, a seminar ongoing at University High School that was given by Seton Hall University about their pre-medical, pre-dental plus program. And uh, after we listened to that seminar, you know, it, it sort of connected a, a, an old dream of mine of wanting to become a dentist. And um, it just laid out the whole foundation of, and support systems and anything that we might have needed to become a dentist or a physician, they just laid it right out. And we all considered the program and applied and the rest was history, but it could have been a law seminar, you know, who knows. We were just interested in using education to do anything to improve our lot in life. That was kind of the message that we all got individually was just use those books and you can change your future. Um, and we believed it and they just happened to be there with, with a, a path that we were able to sort of attach to and just go for and we did it. And I think it, it it made sense because the desire to help people was 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 what we do as as, as you know as physicians and dentists and so it, it just made sense for us and then you know at first it was kind of tough it's like ah oh, can can we really do this you know and I think it, it was more of us doing it together our pact and just taking one step at a time and putting one foot in front of the other if had we like looked way down the road we might have it, it might have been too daunting to either even pursue it but. We just knew we were going to do it together, and we felt like almost as if we had like a force field around ourselves, and we just kept barreling forward, and and just just going through each obstacle and and, and dealing with each each is, issue, um, however we had to deal with it in order to, to to make it through, and 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 we did it, and 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 I think also the fact that we had each other was so important, uh, it was like the main ingredient in that and in, in us making it because. You know, none of us wanted to, to, to leave anybody behind, and none of us wanted to be left behind. We all wanted to walk across that stage together, and I think th that that desire made, made made the jail work so well, and we just helped each other, and, and, and when we got a lot of motivation, what we didn't even know we had. So the three of you discovered what it was you wanted to do. You found your path. 
how quickly before doors started opening up? How quickly before things just started falling into place? Or was it a constant uphill battle? It, it was both. It was both. I mean, there were challenges and obstacles. Uh, it was moments of not feeling like we were going to make it. There was moments where one of us may have wanted to throw the towel in. But as we started to walk that walk, we were amazed by how many doors opened and how many people just kind of came to our side and helped us along the way. So much that it just really inspired us to start to immediately give back. In the college, we formed an organization uh, entitled Ujima, which we brought in high school students to show them what the college life would be if they were to go to college. So uh, it, it was just really, I mean, we were overwhelmed by uh, the amount of support we received, but more importantly, people recognize you. So when they saw the force of three walking on campus, always sticking together, always supporting one another, we st we stood out, and that's when the help came along the way. But then again, you know, just like anything else, when you're pursuing a goal, uh, I think none of us are um, um, immune to having challenges along the way. So there are going to be obstacles. That's what it's meant to be. Uh, but we were able to push through, and the fact that, of course, we did it together it was made it. Uh, even more possible to reach those heights. What is driving you to go around across the country? I mean, you all have your practices. What's driving you to keep going and say, this is our story. We believe that this is something that can help others. Is it the look on the, the students' faces? Is it seeing perhaps the environments that they're coming from, having a memory, this is where I came from, you guys can get out of it too. What, what keeps driving you forward to do what you're doing? I think uh, it's, it's probably a combination of all of those. <clears throat> you know, for one, um, we've, where we come from, it was a lot of bright young people in our classes. And, and we feel like, you know, we made it and not very many of them made it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're special. You know, um, we know that those kids could have made it as well if they would have been able to get a lot of the messages that we like to try to impart on them, if they would have gotten certain breaks or if they had maybe less things going on in, in, in their personal lives. Um, we just know that there's a lot of kids out there that need these messages who come from broken homes, um, less than desirable public schools, um, not very many mentors and people to look up to that can kind of guide them in the way that can help them sort of escape those those circumstances. So we want to try to provide that for them. Um, just working where I work at, at Columbia University and not ver having very many people that look like me um, walking through the halls, I want to kind of try to do something to try to improve that. <laughs> you know, um, just the looks on their faces continue to, to get us going because sometimes you start to, as you're talking to the kid and you are telling them the possibilities of what they might be able to come, what might be able to uh, happen for them, you start to see the wheels turning and you start to maybe think you might be the first person to ever tell them that they are smart and they can have the possibility of having a bright future. So just dealing with those sort of issues and, and, and just us just taking on that social responsibility, we all felt that it was just no option. You know, no matter what we had going on, family life, professional life, it was just our responsibility to share these blessings that we were able to sort of amass and, and, and turn into something from nothing. We, we just know that if we can do it, they can too. So we just want to try to do whatever we can, give them strategies, give them our mindsets, give them encouragement, whatever we can to try to get them to understand their potential. Yeah, and I, I just think that also along with what Dr. Jenkins says that to us, education is cool. There's this misconception that it's corny and you're a nerd if you do well in school. And I mean, that's a huge misconception and we just want to squash that and really make education dynamic and colorful and let them know that it's a cool thing to be a part of and uh, that they should embrace it. So that's what we're here for. We're here to put a face, if you will, to education so that now our kids can have a concrete image to see that they can aim for to go along with the sports and to go along with the entertainment. They can have somebody who represent education who are on the forefront who's saying it's okay to get an A on that test. You've got an A on the test. That's what's up. Like you're doing really well for yourself. You want to get another A. So that's what we want to encourage. And we also want them to know that, you know, we are not the smartest. We were not the brightest, but we were persistent. We were dedicated. We were fighting the fight. We were in the trenches trying to get to that next level. So 
just like them, they may have a class that sort of throw them off and they feel like it's not for them. We want them to know to keep pushing, to keep persevering, that we went through those same challenges, that you will come out a winner. You just have to push yourself through that class and that, that period of time that you're going through. I wanted, I wanted to add, too, that, you know, they say to whom much is, is given, much is required. And, 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 and I, it almost is our, our duty and our obligation, I think. Um, but we love it. And, and also, I, we hope that we can inspire other people to, to, to get out there and do these kinds of things. Um, because it, it, it is such a rewarding feeling to change somebody's life. I mean, just, you know, the same, like, it's the exact same feeling when you save somebody's life, it, you know, physically, like, you know, as a physician. But but to change somebody's life, to see that that you know that spark or, that, or, or the wheels turning, and you get we get a lot of emails from from young people and from people all over, not just young people, from adults, um, because our story has resonated you know cross cultural, cross ages, everything, and so we've seen a lot of people um, become inspired, and um, and we haven't really been following this um, um, scientifically, but I just read an article about how um, the minority. Um, um, Enrollment in medical school has almost doubled in the last ten years, and 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 I know that a lot of these kids, these you know hundreds of thousands of kids that we have seen and touched, um, have been inspired, and and I think we 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 played some part in that, and we just want to keep going and, and, and keep doing the best that we can to try to to help, because as I said before, it, it's not a lot of of things that out there that inspire, not a lot of things out there that inspire me, unfortunately, and I want to get out there and, and try to help to change that. So um, you guys had each other mm -hmm. to help through the hard times to get where you need to be today. What advice do you have for those students out there who are going it alone? Where do they go to find inspiration? Where do they go to find a mentor, somebody to help them through the hard times? We, you know, we get that question a lot um, because it's true. I mean, you know, we were lucky to have each other and, and, and to still be best friends, you know, after many, many years. and. Um, and some people say, well, I don't have that kind of friendship. And I, I think the answer came once when, when a student said, you know, I don't, he sent us an email and said, you know, we don't, I don't have the friends that you have, but I have myself and I have God. And I made a pact with God in order to, 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 to persevere and have the faith to keep going. And, and, and I encourage them to, to continue with that, but also still to look for that, that, that person or those people that can actually be that, that bond to help them go through. Because I'm sure there are people out there, you know, he just has to keep an eye out for it. But until then, he keeps that, that faith and that, and that pact with God. On a more practical note, what financial advice would you give for any student uh, from a hard background or these days just middle class background who's trying to pursue a career in medical field or anywhere else? I mean, uh, that's, that's a very relevant point. Uh, and all the more reason why you should get all A's because the more A's you get, the more scholarships you will qualify for. Um, Fortunately, the three of us qualify for a lot of financial need-based scholarships, and we also took a big scholarship book. We divided it into three, and each one of us took a section. And this is pre-internet. Uh, each one of us took a section, and uh, you know, we, we sort of uh, highlighted the scholarships in which we qualify for collectively and individually. Uh, so I think you know uh, you have to do your diligence in sort of looking for scholarships, but also realize that. You know, it's it's never, you are in training at all times. So if you're in the eighth grade to seventh grade, you're preparing for college. So you have to get all the A's that you can and B's that you can. You can't settle for C's and D's and F's and things like that. So each one of those opportunities or each grade that you receive that's a high mark translate into a possibility of you receiving some uh, financial uh, assistance because college is expensive. I mean, you're talking about fifty, sixty thousand dollars a semester, mm -hmm. or a year rather, uh, for for some schools or a semester even. And uh, so you have to make sure that you know you're. And it's the price is only going to go up. Yeah. So and uh, mom and dad just don't have it. So you have to make sure you do it. You have to do your part in order to kind of ease that burden. Mm -hmm. Anything the three of you would like to add before we wrap up this interview? I just, you know, I just wanted to say like. For each and all the students, just believe in yourself, you know, and just realize like we've been there, and there's been moments of darkness where you, we, you know, as individuals and collectively, we're unsure if we were doing the right thing. We had some moments of self doubt. We had some moments of challenges. But I think those moments are meant to be to test how tough you are and to see how far you can take it. So if you just keep pushing through those moments with the realization that these are sort of check marks to see if you're 
going to make it to that next level, mm-hmm. if you can push yourself through that, you will reach heights beyond your imagination and doors will open that you can't see. They were the, that bliss that you spoke about earlier, you will start to see that reveal itself, but you first have to walk the walk and then all your fortune will come to you. Mm-hmm. Thank you gentlemen so much for coming here all the way from New Jersey. <laughs> These people are jet lagged right now. <laughs> and I'm Charla, we will be back right after this. Education was bigger than just us getting our degrees. It was about survival. It was survival for us. It was that real. And we knew that you know what we were doing was bigger than the three of us. It was about putting education first and showing others that you know if we can do it, so can you. So I made it through. You know, we made it through the four years of college and. We went on to medical dental school, and that was tough. You know, medical school kind of breaks you down and rebuilds you and gets you back to where you need to be in order to practice medicine and dentistry. And, uh, you know, there was times, man, I can tell you, I just want to talk about perseverance real fast, but there were times where I just really wanted to quit uh, because, you know, it just was tough. There was moments where you just want to give up. But it's amazing how at that moment when you really want to quit is the moment where you really got to push your heart. It's like... You can't see it, but it's like once you push past that moment, the finish line is right there. You can't see it. You don't know it exists, but you like, that is for like quitting. If you just push that one little extra step, the finish line is right there. So understand, like, and I say that because without, without failure, sometimes there's no success. And before you understand success, you gotta have moments of failures when you fall down, you gotta pick yourself back up and keep pushing. Just because it's difficult doesn't mean it's not for you. So you got to keep pushing yourself through. And that was what medical school was for me. So after I graduated, we graduated medical school, I came back home and I, I took a residency position in emergency medicine at the same hospital that I was born in, in North New Jersey at Beth Israel. And to be there uh, practicing emergency medicine in North, in my hometown. And that's what Newark was for me to come back home and take care of families that I grew up with, their nieces, their nephews, their grandparents, and now to stand on that corner and be a different option, a real concrete different option, not a figment of your imagination, something that's real to compete against the drug dealers, the car thieves, the gun tours, to be something different. Now our young ones can aim for something that they can see. And that's what is the magic. And that's why we do what we do. That's why we travel the country and do this speaking engagements, because we want to have a face education. We want to make education cool and stylish and glamorize it and make it so that our young ones embrace it and realize the importance of it. Because all the friends that we left behind, you best believe, undoubtedly, unequivocally, all of them came up to us, the ones that were still alive, and said, I wish I would have done different. And you don't want to be that wish I could have, should have, did have person. You don't want to be that person. So make sure you understand the ones that are in college, stay in college. It's fly to be here, but it's even flyer to stay here and finish up. Okay, for the young ones that's not yet in college, understand this is it. I mean, you can you can know all the Drake's lyrics that you could think of. You can know them from forward to backwards, but understand that you know this is it. Like you have to get your education, and and so it's our job now to glorify it and glamorize it and make it something that our children embrace, and that's what we want a mission to do. set your mind to, you can actually accomplish, believe that you're smart, all of you guys are smart. Every one of you guys can conquer any class that, or any assignment that's put before you. It may be challenging, Lord knows math, I always say it, I've been saying it a lot lately, Um, math was uh, a challenge, to say the least. But I didn't cop out and say, okay, well I'm not a math person. You hear that cop out often. But the way I tackled it, which is going to have to be the way you're going to tackle it if you plan on being successful, was when I first started to run into those issues, I didn't let those issues send me a message that I wasn't smart or that I couldn't handle it. That's kind of the first step in conquering it. Just don't let it defeat you because, let's say, it's biology. You're in biology 101, the very first class. Uh, I mean, the very first test in biology, and you plan on being this doctor, but, you know, your major is biology on the first test in the first class, 
you don't do so well. What do you do? You know, but a lot of people take that bad grade and let it send them a message and they internalize it like, okay, I'm not smart. Or um, maybe being a doctor isn't for me. And that's just one class, one test. You don't let that defeat you like that. You, all of you guys are tougher than that. You know, you might not have that. That might not be an example of what your struggle is, but you all are going to face that sort of struggle where it's like a test of your will and your desire to get over it. And you can get over every single one of those. And when I had those issues in math, I don't know, I guess it was having these guys and having people in my ear when I was younger just make, letting me know all the time, you're smart, you're smart, you're smart. That I just said, okay, well, I'm just going to have to put a little extra time in math to get over it. You know, there are tons of resources you can use. Once you say, it's not me, then you start to, you can start to try to figure out how to conquer it, whether it's studying in groups, whether it's st taking the professor's office hours and knocking on your professor's door, talking to them, getting tutoring, putting in more time. It can be simply you practicing more and putting a little bit more time in it to get over that particular class. I have all these classes and then I start to understand based on the first wave of exams which ones need more time, then I have to sort of delegate my time effectively so that I can get through all of these classes. But don't let it sort of, once you internalize it like it's you, then you sort of like give up and then the only thing waiting for you when you give up is an F and you wasted your money for that particular class. And then you started to reevaluate your dreams and start to knock them down a little bit like I wanted to be a dentist. And sometimes when I would have uh, issues, I'd be like, okay, well, maybe uh, I should start thinking about being a dental technician, like a level down. Because those challenges play tricks on your mind like that. But you have to sort of just be stronger than that and have the, the vision of your future and what it is you want to be and how you want to live and the things you want in your future. Kind of have that at the forefront and everything else is just like uh, uh, just the means to an end. Each one of those classes is just one obstacle you have to get over to get you closer and closer to your dream. You know, just keep pushing and keep fighting. It's, it's not going to be easy. You have to kind of stack the deck in your favor as best as you can. Um, the way we did it was we found each other. And that, I mean, that was the um, key ingredient for me that we sort of came together and filled in those gaps. But we also tremendously pushed each other in a positive way. And that's what you're going to have to find, which will stack the deck for you. Push each other, because we've seen the negative effects as well, where um, there's people out there who have gotten caught for crimes that they never thought that they could possibly commit. But the company that they kept brought more negative out of them than they ever knew they had in them. And if you're on the reverse side of that, the company that I kept brought more positive out of me than I ever knew I had in me. More, you know, intelligence, more just inclination to academics than I ever thought. If you create that network, that social network that within your group, education is the coolest thing in the world. You're having a bright future and, and you know, and that doesn't mean you don't, you, you're not being true to yourself and who you are and where you come from. You can still be cool. You know, be proud of who you are. Let that help you get to where you're going. It's going to be valuable. Trust me. Me holding on to my culture makes me feel good for one. It makes me be able to relate to you for two. And it makes me a better dentist. If you're the person that I'm talking about who's just here lollygagging, start Monday. It's never too late to start. You probably shock your professors out of their seat. Start <laughs> but they're going to jump all over you to try to help you. There is no such thing as delayed gratification. Now, first of all, what is, we know what delayed gratification is, right? When you can't get what you want, but there, and you got to wait for it. There is no such thing as delayed gratification. Gratification and being gratified is every day. When you wake up in the morning, it is gratifying. When you have, when you are around your friends, it is gratifying. 
there's no such thing as delayed gratification in the sense that, okay, yeah, you might not have a, a boatload of money and, until later, or maybe never, a boat, you know, because it's hard to get a boatload of money nowadays, but, uh, <laughs> but it, it is, you can't think of it like that. You can't think of life as being delayed as if somebody pressed the pause button and then you're just sitting there in suspended animation like this. <laughs> That doesn't happen. You are living. I was living. We were living. We almost got caught up with this delayed gratification bit. Oh, my friends are dropping a big old car sitting there. Sandra, you see, you see Raheem, he got a bad old car, he got ribs on it. I'm like, I want that. That, man. See, we got this delayed gratification going on. Mind you, we're, 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 we're enriching our minds, learning things. We were partying, having a good time. We had friends, we had girlfriends, we, we, we were living a good life too. But we're looking over here and seeing this going on, like, oh, see now, I, I, our, our gratification is delayed. Oh, not knowing that we were happy. <laughs> I don't get what, there's no such thing as delayed gratification, except one caveat I'm gonna tell you in a minute. But there is no such thing as delayed gratification. It just, it doesn't exist. You are living, you are not, you are living. You're moving. You're doing. You're working. You're you're living. Don't let anybody tell you. That, put that word out of your mind. There is no such thing as delayed gratification. And the other thing I want to say: there's a couple of ways to get a boatload of money. One is to be the hottest rapper or singer in the world. One is to be the hottest athlete in the world. One is. Education. And the last is the plan of Mega Millions. <laughs> entertainer, athlete, education, Mega Millions. Well, I'm going to put entertainer, athlete, and Mega Millions in the same category because it is one in a million chance that you're going to be that top, top, top person. So I'm going to put all three of those in it. And then I'm going to put education. We, you have a better chance of being a three doctor than you do being a LeBron James or a Little Weezy or a Trey or whoever. The odds are better than you do not, 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 And I'm not saying being a doctor, whatever it is that you want to be, a lawyer, whoever it is, you have a better chance of being us, one of these people. And, and so this is, let's be real. Let's, let's be real. And so, so, I'm going to get rid of some of these myths, so, so, so no delayed gratification, you, you might as well play the Mega Millions, unless you, you know, well, go with education, education, right, yeah, education, go with education, and then the last thing I want to say is, no matter what you do in life, it's going to be hard, no matter what it is, life, you know, there, there's challenges, so you might as well do something positive, so you can reap the benefits in the end, and so, like, it, and so it clicked, it made sense to me when I was young, like, wow, that, that makes sense. Although, I slipped a few times if you read the book. But, um, <laughs> but, but, um, but, it, but it, it's true. It, it, it's everything you, you, you know, you need to know, you learned when you were a kid. Your, your parents and your grandparents, they taught you these things. You, you already know them. It's just a matter of, 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 of doing them and, and, and enacting them. And you can, and you will.